Thank you for plugging into this Family Life News podcast, streaming issues-driven, family-focused news. This is Faith Under Fire. Each Thursday on Family Life, we give voice to religious battlegrounds in this nation. I'm your host, Tracy Lynn. With us today, Dr. Charles Ware, Executive Director of Grace Relations at the College of Biblical Studies. Earlier this month, a mass shooting occurred at a grocery store in Buffalo, New York. The shooter was allegedly racially motivated. He killed 10 people and injured three others. Charles, would you tell us some of your own experiences with racism? Well, Tracy, there's too many to get into them all, but I'll focus on just one thing. My wife of 48 years, Sharon, she went on to be with the Lord November 29th of 2021. Mm. We got married and we graduated from a Bible college. I graduated a year before she did. And we had gotten involved in starting an inner city church together, but some people discriminated against you because of what was perceived as a marriage of mixed races, and they were not in favor of that. Yes, that's definitely was the issue. And we've hit it in a lot of other places we've been, just that believing that races should be segregated. Despite what you witnessed and experienced yourself and your wife, you are now a proponent of racial reconciliation. I call it grace relations rather than race relations. Grace, I use as an acrostic, God's reconciliation at Christ's expense. Hmm. And one of the things I keep in my mind is that I have been saved by the grace of God. I am a sinner. I was headed to hell. Two white men brought me the gospel in 1968, the year Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. Robert Kennedy was assassinated. Hmm. I repented of my sin, put my faith in Christ, his love for me, his grace to me, is something I don't want to give up for anybody or anything. They often tell people the price of hating you is too high a price for me to pay because I have to lose fellowship with Christ. So God's graciousness to me gripped my heart, and then God changed my heart and my mind to follow him and show his love to others. Even if they mistreat me, I am to show his love and just look for justice and righteousness. If I don't see it here, he will take care of it in eternity. Amen. Christ in you. How do we discover what our own prejudices are and have meaningful discussions about race? Well, you know, one thing I do believe that most people I meet that have a problem, I would say, is prejudice and not racism, because racism got a very strong negative context to it, which I would say that the individual who shot the people in Buffalo was a racist. But a lot of people, they don't know, they don't understand. So at any rate, I think that one of the things we need to do is ask God to examine my heart and see if there's any wicked way in me. I'm to represent his heart, his mind, not mine. And when I can keep that straight, that I want the love of God to rule in my heart. I want to be an instrument of the grace of God. It makes a big difference. And it allows me, by the way, since I'm secure in Christ's love, I don't have to be defensive. You don't define me. If you like me or don't like me, that doesn't define me. Christ defines me. And I'm an instrument in his hand. So I can listen to people, try to understand where they're coming from, their hurt, their fears, their misunderstandings. And I can lovingly, without anger and revenge, speak back to them. And yeah, I've been shown some areas in which I'm prejudiced or have been prejudiced against whites or others. So I try to look at things from that way and and let God speak to me and reprove me. And I try to grow as I enter what I call respectful conversations with people. Excellent point. As we go about our days following Christ, how can we foster a love for every person and racial reconciliation in our own sphere of influence? You need to keep your heart, keep your head, and keep your hands. One of the things I like is the Acts 10, the meeting between Cornelius and Peter. Separate, segregated Jews and Gentiles didn't eat together, didn't go in one another's houses, so on and so forth. But Cornelius, had a meeting with God, and Peter had a meeting with God, and they both were convinced from God 
that they were to come together. And when they came together, you saw true humility. I keep my heart by keeping a regular, open relationship with God. When I'm hurt, when I'm disappointed, all the rest, I want to take that to God and let it keep my heart, keep my head. I want to be renewed. I want to be conformed to the image of Christ by the renewing of my mind. So I don't want the media to, to tell me everything is happening or, or people or politics. So I'm like, I want God's word to tell me that. And then I want to use my hands to get engaged, to be the man or woman that God would want us to be. I think we all need to do that. And one thing you said, I have a training that I do on the Grace Relations Dream. That's an acronym. But, but when it comes to applications, I say applications within your context. Our contexts are different. And where we live, the people we have influence over, and they are different. They think different. They have different values. So we need to live it in our lives, live it in our homes, in our churches, live it in our communities, and don't try to change the whole world. You're not going to do that. Change or influence those people within your sphere and let God decide how far that goes. Such a great reminder. That's all he expects us to do, really, is bloom where we're planted. Amen. Wow. Amen. I tell people I live for one thing. It's not what my so-called race thinks of me or what another race thinks of me or political or the government thinks of me. I live for the day when I stand before Christ. I want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Oh, excellent reminder for all of us, Charles. Thank you. Where can our listeners learn more about you and the work that you're doing? Well, they can go to cbshouston.edu forward slash gr for Grace Relations. Or they can go to cbshouston.gracerelations. I think that'll take you to the page, too. But I work with a college called the College of Biblical Studies. Our taglines are truth, training, and transformation. We try to model this message. We're about 50% African-American, 30% Latino, 17% white, and the rest are other. But we're serious about this. We want our students to capture this, not just hear about it, but live it out amongst one another and impact the world wherever they go. That's Dr. Charles Ware with the College of Biblical Studies. I'm Tracy Lynn, Family Life News.